Let's talk about reliability today. This is always a surprisingly contentious issue. And, well, I'm going to talk about it because we've got two chariots in our fleet that are aging at dramatically different rates. And I think it's really fascinating. I want to kind of walk you through some of what we're seeing here. Welcome back to All Cars. I am John. And because this is a contentious issue, I'm going to start off with a contentious statement. And that is, I think that most manufacturers have reached a certain level of parity with each other. Now, that is not to say that they have reached equality with each other. But certainly, I can remember back 40 years ago in the 80s when, well, there were some truly awful, terrible, unreliable, horrible, horrific cars that were being built. But largely, by and large, the cars we buy today, whether it's this Nissan or a Ford or that Camry or that Cadillac or uh, that, uh, ooh, that Chevy truck down there, you can kind of expect to get a good car. And it's funny because this is such a personal issue to people. This is they take it very emotionally when I suggest things like my family has owned Fords for 40 years and we've always had very, very good service. I will get comments below that say, yeah, well, you know, Ford is three years running number one recalled manufacturer. Let's not forget about their internal water pump on some of those V6s. If I suggest that GM's doing some good stuff, well, I'll have people make a comment below saying, well, yeah, but they've got the wet belt in some of their engines. So what a horrible design. Or, you know, they're building some stuff in Korea, and it's it's terrible, terrible quality. I can, I can hear you cracking your knuckles and getting ready to let me know below. But for every single one of those bad ones, I tend to get a good one as well, agreeing with me that Ford's good, or they've owned GMs for 50 years, and it's always been good. And we always get comments about, well, Toyota and Honda are not what they used to be. The excellent, highest quality possible of the 90s, well, they've slipped a little bit. And that's where I'm saying there's some parity that's starting to happen here. I'm not saying that they're perfect compared to each other. And the data that you can see out there is, well, inconclusive. You look at J.D. Power and look at their longer-term reliability, which is uh, three years of ownership, well, Lexus and Toyota are number one and two, but Chevy and Buick are number three and four. But then you look at consumer reports, and Buick is, I think they're about 12th, and then somewhere below average, you end up with Chevy, Dodge, and Ford all kind of clumped together. But through it all, there's an interesting thing I've noticed the past couple of months for one of our cars. And I want to kind of share you, share with you some of the issues that we've been seeing because it's interesting to see how two cars are aging very differently from each other. So let's walk over here and take a look real quick. All right. So behind me, we've got on the one hand a 2017 Ford Explorer. And over here, you've got my chariot, a 2014 Honda Accord. Now, they both are within three years of each other. This is the newer one, the Ford, and they're within spitting distance of each other in terms of the actual mileage on them. We do tend to take good care of our cars, but they do sit outside all day long, all the time. We don't garage anything. And it's interesting to see how the Ford is aging differently than the Accord. So the first thing here in the Ford is this. That's right. A couple of months ago, the lock stopped working, but only on one door. The passenger side front door stopped locking. You could lock everything else. The alarm would set. The alarm would go off, but you couldn't lock that door. In fact, you couldn't push the plunger down. But because it's a Ford, it just fixed itself. The second one is this. So one of our TPMS sensors in the rear tire has gone bad. This car has only 68,359 miles on it. And one of the sensors is already going bad in the car. It's not a big deal, uh, but 
it's a little frustrating. That should last three, four, five more years, 40,000 more miles before one of the sensors starts going bad. Now, the next thing is actually a few different things, and this is really what inspired this video. This right here. Literally, a piece of trim is starting to come off. Like, they just put a spot of glue on it, and over seven years, it just fell off. But the biggest one is this. This that's the front cowl. And right along the front edge here, there's a piece of rubber. Now these are not glued down or anything like that. They're just supposed to sit against the window. Now several months ago, my wife started to get a buzzing sound in the dashboard. It sounded like a screw had fallen loose and was just rattling around in there. It sounded like an angry little bee. And it started moving around the dash. So I started doing a lot of research and I found out that cowl can go bad. I did not do a video of replacing it or what its original condition was. I did get a quick video of it in the trash can so you can see how decayed the rubber was from the sun. And I replaced that whole cow. It was about $257, something like that. And I just did the work. It took like 30 minutes. But they used such poor quality rubber, it degraded in less than seven years and had to be replaced. And add, add to that, this piece right here along the front window, there's a recall on it because that piece can come loose and fly off at highway speeds. So let's take a look at the Honda. Well, let's see, first, yep, the locks work. The tire pressure sensor is okay. But here, well, let's look at this. trim piece actually attached to the car and again this is a 10 year old car now this is three years older been sitting in the sun the whole time look at the condition and so that's really what i wanted to talk about a little bit today that i believe that manufacturers are kind of getting the big stuff right they're kind of getting the, the engines and the transmissions and the transaxles and the four-wheel drive systems, by and large, they get them right. For those of you who say, no, Ford and GM suck, Toyota's perfect, well, no. Toyota just recalled 100,000 truck engines, and if they haven't already, they are going to be recalling transmissions for the new Tacoma. One of the most reliable vehicles sold in America, Toyota can't get the transmission right in the new one. So every manufacturer has problems. It's a matter of how much. But many people have talked for a long time about the fact that while the American manufacturers might be getting the big stuff right, they cheapen out in the little things. I know certainly Scotty Kilmer likes to talk about the uh, cheapen out in parts you can't see, the, the uh, undersized starters, handles that are cheapened out of the truck latches or cheapened out. All of these little parts are cheapened out here. And this is a very dramatic example to me that having a Honda that's three years older than this Ford and the Ford is slowly decaying before our eyes. It's rather shocking to see. Right, so my GoPro cut off there because it was a modestly warm day outside, and I'm sure I ended with something dramatically insightful, but I think it revolved around this, is that when I was replacing that cowl on the Explorer, the prices were between $250, $300, $310, something like that. I could find them online cheaper, but the shipping was more expensive. I'm very lucky that my dealership 
actually could get one within a day or two, and it was the cheapest I could find, except for finding non-OEM parts on Amazon from Chinese manufacturers. And my wife and I actually had a discussion about this. If the OEM equipment is so poor, is it really going to be worth it? Is it, is it going to be worse to buy a Chinese product and see how it works. I'm surprised that with the focus on engines and transmissions and everything else around cars these days, that these wear items don't get more attention. Uh, gaskets and trim pieces and things like that, because these at 68,000 miles start to eat up hundreds of dollars in replacement costs. If you can buy something for 20% less from a Chinese manufacturer, imagine an entire car assembled like that. They could kill the automotive industry here in the U.S. And I think that's what everybody's afraid of. Let me know your thoughts below. Thanks for being here.